This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually, through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445297-1 and cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445686-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box, then click Send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the Handouts icon to see available handouts. Click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue in the Questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar or send an email to chuck at valerin-group.com to report it. You may also call 813-527-1276. Staff will do their best to assist you. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367 or email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450 by phone at 850-414-4753 or email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. As mentioned, the project is located on State Road 19 from north of Stevens Avenue to County Road 452 in Lake County. There are two financial project identification numbers, or FPIDs, for these projects, 445297-1 and 445686-1. In this area, State Road 19 is split with northbound State Road 19 known as Grove Street and southbound State Road 19 as Bay Street. So, why are we doing this project? As it works to take all steps possible to achieve its goal of zero fatalities and serious injury on state roadways, FDOT has identified certain corridors as candidates for additional pedestrian and or bicycle safety improvements as part of planned resurfacing projects. This segment of State Road 19 was identified to have a high demand for different modes of transportation. As a result, the FDOT Mobility Office partnered with the City of Eustis, Lake County Government, the Eustis Police Department, New Vision for Independence, and Eustis Residents to evaluate opportunities for pedestrian and bicycle improvements. The recommended improvements we will review tonight were developed from those discussions to help enhance safety throughout the corridor. 
Now we will walk through the plan changes along the corridor starting at the beginning of the project. At the intersections of northbound State Road 19, call Grove Street in this portion of the corridor at Norton Street and Lemon Avenue. The department proposes to install a pedestrian activated lighted crosswalk called a rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RRFB. RRFBs improve safety for pedestrians as they increase the visibility of the crosswalk. Moving north along the project corridor, we will see a number of new pedestrian and driver safety improvements. Pedestrian signal and lighting improvements are planned at the existing signalized intersection of Bay Street at Citrus Avenue and Lakeshore Drive. The Orange Avenue intersections with northbound and southbound State Road 19 will be upgraded with reconstructed traffic signals and pedestrian signals and enhanced lighting. Raised crosswalks are planned at the intersections of Magnolia and McDonald Avenues at both Bay and Grove Streets, which will help to slow driving speeds. At McDonald Avenue and Grove Street, the new crossing will also have an RRFB. In-road lighting is recommended at the raised crosswalks to further enhance visibility of the crossing. In addition to the raised crosswalks, other planned safety improvements include the incorporation of curb extensions or bulb outs that help to define on-street parking areas, improve sight distance, and help to encourage safer driving speeds. These bulb outs provide an opportunity for landscaping that can also help improve safety for both drivers and pedestrians and improve the appearance of the corridor. Clifford Avenue will receive updates at the intersections of both Bay Street and Grove Street. Planned improvements include reconstructing the traffic signals and upgrading pedestrian signals and lighting. At the intersection of Clifford Avenue and Grove Street, the department plans to add an RRFB, in-road lighting, and an APS. Extended curbs and upgraded crosswalks are proposed on Bay Street at Hazard and Gotch Avenues. Finally, an RRFB is planned for the intersection of Eustis Street at northbound State Road 19. This will also include in-road lighting as well as an APS. The new crossings and existing mid-block crossings will all have new overhead lighting, repaving, some driveway modifications, and minor drainage adjustments are also planned along the corridor. The department is evaluating additional improvements along the corridor including raised intersections to help control speed. Additionally, the department proposes to add bicycle accommodations throughout the corridor, called Sharrows, which aim to increase driver awareness that bicyclists will be sharing the lane. So, what exactly is an RRFB? A rectangular rapid flashing beacon, or RRFB, consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights, that are mounted below a yellow pedestrian crossing sign. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs are installed to bring more visibility to the marked crosswalk to help pedestrians who need to cross. Let's look at how a pedestrian will interact with an RRFB. Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and cars will be proceeding normally. Pedestrians are encouraged to push the button to activate the beacon, thus making their intent to cross more noticeable to motorists. Upon pressing the button to activate the signal, pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or if no traffic is present closer than a safe stopping distance. Pedestrians will notice the flashing yellow lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacon will continue for a short time, allowing pedestrians to cross. Finally, after pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB, repeating the cycle. Now, 
let's look at how a motorist will interact with the RRFB. The RRFB's default state is dark until a pedestrian presses a button to cross. The motorist may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Once a pedestrian presses the button, indicating they're ready to cross, the yellow lights begin to flash rapidly. The motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop safely. Motorists must remain stopped while pedestrians cross. The beacon will continue to flash and motorists may proceed once the pedestrians clear their lane. Finally, the beacons will return to dark and motorists may proceed with traffic when there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacons will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches the crossing and presses the button. Moving forward, the design on each of these projects is in progress and anticipated to be complete in early 2023, with a total cost of $1.1 million for Project 445297-1 and $986,000 for Project 445686-1. The improvements on both projects will be constructed entirely within the existing right-of-way and therefore will not require property acquisition. Construction for each of these projects is anticipated to begin in late 2023 at an estimated cost of $3.2 million on Project 445297-1 and $1.3 million on Project 445686-1. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project numbers 445297-1 or 445686-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by Monday, May 23, 2022, 11 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. To submit comments in person, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you are participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445297-1 or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445686-1. You may also contact the project manager directly by email at amed.lalfi at dot.state.fl.us. That's a h m e d dot e l a l f y at dot.state.fl.us. Or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 542, Deland, Florida. 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5207 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. In the state of Florida, 35% of all serious injuries occur at intersections. Target Zero is a statewide initiative to reduce the number of transportation-related serious injuries and deaths across Florida to zero. For more information on what FDOT is doing to achieve Target Zero, scan the QR code on this slide or visit TargetZeroFL.com. 
On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions about the meeting, please submit them by May 23, 2022. Contact information, a recording of this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445297-1 or www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 445686-1. Have a good evening.